Well, thanks for joining us today. We're here at Big Creek RV Park, and I'm here with the owner, and I will let her introduce herself, and she can tell you a little bit about her park. Well, hi there, I'm Patty Claney. This is Big Creek RV Park, and uh, we built it from scratch. So, all of this was a field before we started. Well, then you've done a lot of work. <laughs> done a whole lot of work. Because yes. you have how many sites here? Uh, we started with 40, and we are up to 65. Okay, all right. now. Those are, you got back ends and pull throughs. Yes. Okay. Uh, I noticed kind of the arrangement was is that you had like down the center of the park is the pull throughs, it looks like, and then mm -hmm. you got the back ends on, on both sides. Right. It kind of lends itself to that naturally because for the pull throughs, you have to have, you have to be able to pull in and pull back out. So we, we put the back end sites on the creek, pull throughs in the middle, and then another set of back ends on the other side. Yeah. And then all of the sites, we figured if you're going to build the park from scratch, make all of the sites the same. They all have full hookups. They all have 30 and 50 amp sewer, cable, and Wi-Fi. Just make them all the same. Yeah. I'm too old to try to remember which ones have 50 amp and which ones have sewer. Just make them all the same. <laughs> there you go. There make you go. Easy. That makes it easy. That makes it easy. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, I got to tell you, your Wi-Fi Thank you. It rocks. Really rocks. It, it's actually harder to get your Wi-Fi working, especially in a rural area, than it is to build a park. It really is. That's the hardest thing. Yeah. Well, now I know that right now there's not a lot of people in the park. It's during the week. So, you know, I always expect it to be a little better. Mm -hmm. But compared to a lot of other places that I've been, it's, it's superior. Well, thank you. Very now, superior. we really have to manage it because we have DSL that comes through the phone line. So we aren't equipped to do streaming video or anything, but, you know, we do have really good Wi-Fi because, you know, you're, there's a difference between, between your Internet and your Wi-Fi. So one of the things that we that we do um, to try to make sure everyone has adequate Internet and Wi-Fi is we uh, everyone has a login, but your login works for one device at a time. So that way, and, but our our system manages it for you when you log your phone on, then when you log your tablet on with that same login, it logs your phone off. So you don't have to do anything. Okay, so you don't have com things competing and then that way it keeps the speed up. Yeah, it works fine. What we found the first, the first time we really tried it was a Memorial Day weekend two years ago and it worked beautifully. Everybody could get on, everybody could do what they needed to. We didn't have any problems. That's great, that's great. So, All right. Which was nice. Now I know that you're open year round. Yes, we are open year round. So you're you've I know you were telling me that your water is set up to where you have frost free. Yeah, we have frost free hydrants. It's really simple. Uh, they self siphon. So when you turn the hydrant off, it siphons the water out so the hydrant doesn't freeze. And so what we do is we give you a handout. It's winter camping at Big Creek RV Park. And either if you carry a heated hose, we have several hydrants that are heat taped. You can pull into one of those sites plug in the heat tape, use your heated hose and have water the whole time you're here. Or otherwise you can follow the directions on the handout and fill your uh, water tank if it's going to freeze, put your hose inside so your hose doesn't freeze because I've made that mistake before and it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> Turn the hydrant off and you're good to go. But that way you can have water in the winter when it's going to freeze. Nice. That's nice to have that, that available. Uh, so you've got some fun activities too that you that you guys do. What's your big thing? Um. You know, we have a couple, we try to have something almost every weekend so that you can either go out and do all of the things that are available in the area, you know, the, float the Black River, go to Johnson Shut-In State Park or Elephant Rock State Park or just stay here. Um, we have rubber duck races every Saturday from May, beginning of May until end of, of September. Um, we do a big Christmas in July, you know, think cool thoughts when it's hot, uh, <laughs> where people get trophies for decorating their sites and we have either somebody dress up as Santa or as an elf and they we give goodie bags to all of the kids and we have the elf drives the little train through the park so the kids can <laughs> ride for a quarter you know we anything we can think of that's you know just something mm -hmm. fun um, we have two big Halloween weekends which and people are crazy for that really crazy um, we have someone who actually brings a, a one of those 42 channel light shows oh my and decorates their whole site and with the music and everything like you see on TV huh yeah, for Halloween, just to get a trophy. There's wow. no money, it's just a trophy. It's just a trophy. <laughs> it's just a trophy. <laughs> but we have, you know, trophies for costumes and pet costumes and group costumes and a haunted hayride. We'd get Project Graduation to come in and haunt mm -hmm. the hayride down the trail. <laughs> now, now you were telling me that those duck races are a big deal. The duck races, we we just tried it out one year because we thought it was something fun to do in the creek and it's, um, it's really, wow. 
wow, we just thought it would be something fun for kids. And wow, if you look at the pictures on our Facebook page, it's there's a lot of adults. They're really crazy for the duck race. Yeah. <laughs> we average about 75 ducks in the duck race. So yeah. everybody wants to get in on a everybody duck race. Everybody wants in on the duck race. Everybody. Yeah. It's it's really hilarious. Now that starts, what, what weekend do you normally start that on? We always start it on Kentucky Derby weekend. It's okay. A good, it's a good warm weekend usually depending on the Missouri weather but um, we can then we kick it off with an event we do a, a derby duck race everybody gets uh, souvenir horse ducks and then we wear derby bonnets and people bring mint juleps or some other beverage and then <laughs> <laughs> then we watch the derby afterwards and people name their ducks and <laughs> yell the du duck names while they're watching the race and, yeah it's <laughs> we, we actually just try to make any event we can just as as incredibly goofy as we can. So if you like really goofy or, you know, uh -huh. you, you can participate or you can just sit at your site and watch everyone else. <laughs> You're gonna have a good time either way, exactly, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> well, I know uh, the Big Creek here is just as clear and it, it's just a beautiful, beautiful setting. That's what drew us to the property in the first place is when we saw the creek, because it's clear and spring fed and you yeah. know, and it's also led us to make some really eco-friendly decisions about the park. We actually run, won the national, it's awarded by the uh, ARVIC, the National RV Park Association. We won in 2013 and 2014 the National Planet Green Award oh, for nice. some of the things we do. Um, we, all of our water heaters are on demand. It's all either low voltage lighting or uh, solar lighting out in the park when you see lighting. Mm -hmm. um, all of the landscaping is uh, things that are native to the area. And then they also, um, I don't know if you noticed in your video and photo 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 photography around the park, but it's all um, things that attract nature. Yes. And it actually works as an attraction. So there are butterfly gardens and mm -hmm. hummingbird gardens, and we just did a songbird garden down there. Mm -hmm. So it's things like that so that you can actually enjoy it while you're here. It's not just, you know, because Good Sam wants it or because we have to landscape. It actually serves a purpose. Right. And it's also, once it's established, it requires little or no water. You really don't do anything to it. Those sorts of things are what we really try to do. Nice. I saw all the, like the little bird sanctuary stuff and the yellow finches. I, I don't have, have any idea how many yellow finches are down there. Man, I, I, there's no way I could count them all. There's mm -hmm. just so many of them around there. And here in a week or two, the hummingbirds will be the same. The, the butterflies, it's just amazing that if you just, if you just really, and really your conservation website in your state will have that information. I, that's where I found it. I just looked up what was native and it was really easy to find and we put it in and most of it requires no, I think the worst is the, the ones they always ask me about are the bushes down by the meeting hall and they'll get really big and they get um, pinkish white flowers in the spring and then in the fall they get these really bright purple berries and I cut them back six or seven times a year. <laughs> just And you just, you don't even have to do anything fancy, you just whack them, you just cut all this stuff off and. Right, mm -hmm. right. Now, um, you were talking about the on-demand hot water heaters mm -hmm. and I know your shower setup is like the most unique setup I've seen yet for an RV Thank park. Thank yeah. you. It's, it's really, really nice. Thank you. So how'd that all come about that you wanted that set up? Well, when we were planning the park, we went back and forth on several setups and we finally just decided we wanted something really nice. We wanted it to be friendly for anybody. We wanted it to be handicapped accessible, but at the time we were building so many things that, you know, to get the bars and everything is really expensive. So we figured we would build them all big enough that at any time you could go in and equip everything with the hand. So we have one that's completely handicapped accessible with the bars and the special shower head and everything, but they're all that size. But then we also decided that they should just be really nice showers. They didn't need to be a whole row of just showers. So each one is a, a self-contained private shower. So you go in and there's a mm -hmm. shower stall and with a partition and then a toilet. Come on, you can come up. <laughs> this is Roxy, by the way. Um, and then a partition and then a toilet and a sink and they're low flow toilets. They're the 1.2 gallon and they have the dual where, you know, it's, it's the one button for brown to go down and the other one for yellow to go down. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then there's a sink and then it's all tile and easy to clean and you know, and then you've got four of them. And at any yeah. time we can go in and make them all completely equipped for handicapped accessibility with the bars and the special shower head. Yeah, and, and I gotta tell y'all, it's, they're immaculate. They are immaculately clean from ceiling to floor. 
They are very, very nice. Well, very, thank very you. Nice. We really appreciate that. We worked hard on that. Yeah. To make yeah. sure. Yeah, it's it's not like going into what a lot of these places where you go into <laughs> where you're like, ooh, you know, there's <laughs> well, no way I, I'm taking my shoes off. You know, one of them kind of things. You know? And I think too, it helps that we travel on vacation in our RV for, um, I think if we figured it up correctly 20 years before we built the park so we made notes we kept a notebook we you know did all of these things before we actually sat down to make the plans for the park right so an rv park owner that's actually an rver yes yeah, so everything here is either based on something we really liked somewhere or something that was missing somewhere and we said oh well you have to have it you know the sites are slanted so they're easy slanted to the road so they're easy to back in and pull out of um the site size is based on the fact that we had a truck camper so they always not hold us somewhere that we couldn't fit anything in couldn't fit the truck or anything else so the sh smallest site we have is 35 feet wide by 70 feet long yeah so we've got plenty of room plenty of room absolutely yeah because i know that we're pulled in 35 foot is our camper we're pulled in then i've got the the dually and I've got plenty of room to park even in, in the front of it. You know, it's it's plenty of room there. Yeah, I had had no no issues there whatsoever. Yeah, we have this, uh, the first one's a 42 footer right here, this fifth wheel, and he's got room. And then we made the pad size 16 feet so you can park two vehicles side by side. You know, because right. a lot of people do bring two vehicles. Mm -hmm. You know, right. someone comes down and someone else meets them or someone's following. Sure, sure. You know, we tried to, what we tried to do, anytime we do something here at the park, we tried to, not build for now but build for later nothing's getting smaller everything's getting bigger you know, you know right right the electric we dropped three phase into the park so that you can have a 50 amp at every site you know i don't have to do 150 amp and then 230 amps 150 amp 230 amps right everybody can be accessible to the 50 amp yeah that's nice that's even nice. if you have 50 amp at every site a lot of people when they put the 50 amp in on a busy weekend they can't put a 50 amp at every site they don't have the electric coming into the park to handle that. Right, right. So. And uh, now, not that we always do it right. We've had to learn from something. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. There's, try to think of it. There's, there's always those. There's always those. Yeah, and the, and the things you do wrong are the things you never forget. Well, yeah. and you know, some of it's just poor plan, not poor planning, but you know, you find out later. You know, we did all this of the sites gravel because it's a lot more eco-friendly, um, and here you can do a really hard-packed gravel that is easy it drains well it catches all the pollutants so they don't go into the creek but we have noticed on some of the first sites we built that the gravel starting to crown in the middle and it tends to fall off the sides so we visited a different park one of the few times we got to travel after we built and they had outlined the sites with wood so you'll notice we're going back to several sites and outlining those with wood right i saw some of those farther down that they had the, the ties along the outside yeah now the the second set of pull throughs we built when we added on we put those on when we when we actually built those okay and then after that we're going back and putting the ties around afterwards right okay an aftermarket so to speak right right <laughs> yeah edition. right sure <laughs> so and that seems to be working out well yeah now i know you also have a, a video arcade mm -hmm. got a little video arcade down there uh laundry facilities mm -hmm. um got the meeting hall right the meeting the hall proje projection screen tv right where we do events or people can rent it out if they're having a family reunion or something like that right want to do slideshows show movies whatever yes yep. or they can we've got the cable tv in down there they can watch tv they can watch movies there's all kinds of stuff they can do the you know the trails the trail is actually old highway 49 Oh, okay. So as you're as you're walking down that way, you can actually see where the rocks are still piled up, where they tried to keep the creek from washing it out. I see. Okay. Yeah, we walked a, we walked a little trail. It's a nice little walking trail. It's all gravel. It's well groomed, and it's easy easy walk. Mm -hmm. Real easy walk. Anybody can walk that. If I can walk it, anybody can walk <laughs> it. <laughs> uh, you have the swimming pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is like the darkest blue swimming pool I think I've ever seen. That is the darkest blue. Well, yeah. once again, it's eco-friendly. It's a fiberglass insert, so you never drain it. Okay. You know? So a lot of people with the concrete ones, you have to drain it every year. Right. You paint it. This is no maintenance. You just drain it down a little in the winter, put a little antifreeze in so it doesn't freeze, and you're done. Cover it up in the spring. It takes about an hour or so to get it back up and running. You're good to go. That's great. That is great. That is great. Well, uh, let, oh, uh, you're putting in a lake. Yes, we're putting in, we always, we try to add something every year. 
um, and we usually try to get some guest input on what they'd like to see or and we try to keep it balanced between you can either there, go out and like as I said do all the things there are to do in the area or we like to have some things for people to do here so our latest addition and we we had planned this since we uh, had built the park is a fishing lake so we have it all dug and we have it all leveled out and ready to go but since we're so close to the creek it, it's not going to hold water so we do have to buy a liner so that's the last big big right. step is to get the buy the liner get it put in which should be an interesting there will be facebook pictures and video of that <laughs> because it's all it's over an acre i think of lake yeah it's pretty good size one to two acres so the 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 liner will come all in one piece which should be really interesting how they roll it out <laughs> yeah i would really like to be here to see how that all yeah transpires we'll make sure you're here one way or another <laughs> through youtube or facebook right. or there you all go. of the above there'll there you be go something. some way or another we'll all get to see the process we, we did that for the uh, the pool installation because they do that in one day they just dig the hole and drop the insert in mm -hmm. just, yeah right yeah. Right. Which just, I mean, I, you know, they describe it and you go, how? But when that giant fiberglass thing comes in on the truck, it's pretty amazing. <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah. I can't wait till to see the giant roll of liner. Yeah. It should just be a one big giant, like a carpet roll, but right. vinyl. Yeah. That's so, going to be interesting. Yes. That's going to be interesting. Okay. Well, is there anything that we're forgetting? I don't think so. I really don't. Okay. All right. But, but feel free to come see us or call us or visit us on www.bigcreekrvpark.com we'll be happy to answer any questions and we really appreciate you coming to visit our park yeah and well i you know what we, we've had a good time here uh even though we had a huge storm come downpours. through <laughs> yeah we had what i think they said we had 60 mile an hour winds i'd believe it because i was putting up our awning my husband left the awning down. <laughs> that was fun i wish he'd gotten video because that would have been great that would have been yeah i was putting it on been fun as to see. the hail came yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. We had the hail with it, uh, torrential downpour rains. I mean, we had the whole gambit. So if you need a yeah. little advice, never let your husband leave the awning down, or he should tell you. Um, never try <laughs> to put your awning up when there's a torrential downpour, 60 mile an hour winds, and pea-sized hail while you're wearing capri pants and flip-flops. It's not a good thing. <laughs> it hurts your feet a lot. <laughs> and it's really hard to do while you're saying, ow, because then your mouth fills with water. <laughs> <laughs> it's not good at all. It's terrible. Uh, so you got to come down to Big Creek, check them out. Uh, it's really a nice place to be at. It's clean. It's friendly. It's a lot of fun. You you won't regret your time down here. I'm gonna put all the links in the description on Facebook pages. Your websites, whatever you got. I'll put all the links down in the description so that you can check them out. Give them a call. Make your reservation. Get yourself down here. Great, and you'll get to meet Roxy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> As you can tell, friendly dog. Yes. <laughs> All right. Thanks for joining us. Thanks a bunch. See you next time.